Hello and welcome to the Lord's Prayer Ministries. I'm so excited for you all to be here today. Um, I'm so excited to share with you all what the Lord has um, put on my heart to share with you all today. So um, let's get started. Um, today I really want to talk about um, people pleasing and how to break free from um, the bondage of people pleasing or people bondage really. First, we're gonna open up in prayer and then we're gonna get started. Lord God, I just thank you for today. I thank you for the woman on this channel, Lord Jesus. I ask you to just help us as we um, learn about being set free from people bondage, Lord God. I cancel any assignment of the enemy. I call it false and void. Lord God, I thank you for the woman on this channel and help me push through this message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Really, people bondage and people pleasing are the same thing. So I'll really be using those two um, terms interchangeably. So um, forgive me as if I look away because I'm looking at my, my computer screen for my notes. Synonyms for bondage is like a yoke, oppression, subjection, um, confinement. So you are put under the subjection of something or someone else. Um, so just kind of um, knowing that, you know, Anything that you're bound to, you need to be set free from. So um, whether it's um, sexual sin or um, lust or anything like that, um, definitely it's a big thing and you need to be set free. Basically, what is people bondage? Um, people bondage or people pleasing is someone who rarely ever says no to anything, okay? Um, you always are available to do something for someone and you spend a, a great time doing things for others. So this can be even serving in ministry, um, you know, serving in your family, but um, you're always doing for people, others, and you're, you're afraid to say no, or you, you seldomly say no to um, other people. So some examples are you agree with everyone, um, you act, you need praise to feel good, um, you, you like avoid, try to avoid conflict or, you know, you don't like to um, have any kind of disagreement. So you try to avoid conflict with anyone and you, you don't really admit when your feelings are hurt. Um, you feel uncomfortable if someone is angry with you, you feel burdened by the things you have to do. So those are some examples of, peop of people pleasing or people bondage. And so how does people bondage occur? Um, usually it's a history of either child neglect or some type of abuse in the home as a child. That can be an example of how it um, occurs when you have that neglect or, you know, abuse or anything, you are devalued. And so now as you get older, you try to find value in different things. And one of these ways can be by people pleasing and also insecurity or lack of identity. If you have ever been, a, uh, you know, abused or even if you haven't been abused, you know, maybe you just are the middle child and you just don't really know your identity or you, you feel insecure of who you are. You don't really know, you know, have a strong um, identity of self. Um, that can be a, a reason why you um, are in people bondage. You try to identify yourself through other people. Also, self pride. So pride is always, um, you know, the underlying um, underlying sins are always nine times out of ten going to be um, related to pride, and so with that, just keep in mind, like you're like, okay, how is this related to pride? But uh, pride it takes different forms, and so um, the desire, you people pleasing, is kind of a desire to control whether or not someone likes you, and so um, that can be, you know. Um, a, a way for this people pleasing or people bondage to occur and also fear and fear is like you know just such a big thing to preventing your blessings it's you know um you you having a fear for the need for someone to like you or if they don't like you you're you know you just you know like you have a fear for this person not to like you and so you do anything you can to ensure that they like or love you and so that can be an example of how you can um, be in people bondage so what does the Bible say about people pleasing Proverbs 29 verses 25 says fearing people is a dangerous trap but trusting the Lord means safety, okay? And when I think of safety and trusting in the Lord, I think of Psalms 91 because it's under our, his wings 
we'll, um, you know, that's our safety, that's our cornerstone, that's our refuge. So um, that's our hiding place. And so um, just knowing that, you know, God tells us that he is our safety. We have no need to fear people. Just even the idea of fearing people, you know, that can lead to a trap of the enemy. And so you definitely want to break free from that and know that Jesus Christ and under the wings of God, that is where our safety comes from. Psalms 118.8 says, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. And we can replace that princes with people. It's better to trust in the Lord to than to put your trust in people. Okay. Um, so the Lord is our refuge. You know, he's our fortress. He's our strong tower. And I know it's easier said than done to think this way. And so you have to keep speaking that over your life. You have to keep talking about that. But we're gonna what we're gonna do is kind of break up um, different things about people pleasing or people bondage. So the dangers of people pleasing, and we're gonna go over that. We're gonna go over how to overcome people bondage, and then um, I think that's it. So what are the dangers of people pleasing? Um, basically, it's the, the dependence on others for your self worth, and so um, this is actually a. Uh, you know, you not knowing your identity, you not knowing, you not feeling secure of who you are in Christ. And so um, this is very dangerous because you're putting yourself worth, you're putting your worth in a man and a person, a human being. Um, so you're giving them the kind of power and authority over you. You know, it's important to not put your self worth in anyone but God. Any, any Your identity and everything should come from your foundation in, in Christ and knowing who you are in Christ. Ecclesiastes 4 verses 4 says, Then I observed that most people are motivated to success because they envy their neighbors, but this too is meaningless like chasing the wind. Keep in mind, when I think of neighbors, you know, you usually think of your next door neighbor um, where you live or anything, but your neighbor can be, you know, a friend or a coworker or anything like that. It's people within your community, so people at church, church or anything like that. This can be very dangerous. Um, as far as your dependence on someone, you can't depend on, you know, success in the mindset of the American dream or, you know, what others think success is for you. You have to um, think of success the way God wants you to think of success. And that really is eternity that a lot of times it's, it's eternal. It's never temporary. So in Luke 6, verse 26 says, What sorrow awaits you who are praised by the crowds? For their ancestors also praise false prophets. So he's linking like, it, you know, be careful with being wanting to be praised by the crowds and be careful with wanting to be popular because popularity, if you are popular, I always kind of have that thing in the back of my mind. If, if this person is popular, like how close are they with God? Or if they're popular to the world and, you know, how are they... You know, the Bible says the world will, will, will hate us for us being believers. So um, if you're having the crowd praise you, you have to link that in question. Like, am I really truly um, following God and being an example of God and pleasing God? Or am I am I looking to please people? So um, another danger of people pleasing, and it is it enhances fear and worry in your life. So Philippians 4 verses 6 through 7 says, don't worry about anything except pray about everything. Ask God what you need and thank, thank him for everything, you know, he has done. Um, then you will experience God's peace. And God's peace, you know, let me tell you, God's peace um, will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And this is the peace that surpasses all understanding. And so um, peace that surpasses all understanding is usually peace in the midst of storms, in the midst of tests and trials. You have peace, you have comfort, you're not worried about what's going to happen, you're not worried, you're not looking to the left or right. So this is the kind of peace that God is telling telling us. So if you are worried about people and what they're thinking of you, how peaceful are you living? How you know peaceful are you like going through life? How much are you trusting in God? You know, worry is a sin. Anxiety is a sin. And let me tell you, I'm not immune to this. I have suffered, you know, and I continually suffer with anxiety, um, worry, um, different things like that, you know, and I, you know, you definitely have to cast out every thought and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ. You have to be careful with um, the idea of, okay, what is this person going to think? Or if this happens to me, what is this person going to think? And when I say person, it could be anyone. It could be your mother. It could be your father. It could be your brother. Like anyone close to you. But um, you really, are, we have to shift our mind and what does God 
think? What does God say from tell me to want me to do in this situation and not what people want me or what this person wants me to do? It's what God and I always like I'm telling y'all, I have to continually remo- renew my mind daily. And it's hard because the enemy wants to attack. He wants to attack your mind. That's the first thing he goes for, y'all. If Out of everything, he goes for your mind and he tells you you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. And you just have to cancel it. You have to bring it every thought into the um, obedience of Christ, okay? You have to cast out any imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So that's the danger of um, people pleasing. It enhances your worry. And God tells us what to do. He says, don't worry about anything. It said, pray about everything. So um, another danger of people pleasing is that it shifts your focus on the things of this world and off of Christ. And so we've already kind of streamlined into this. Um, But Mark 8 verses 38 says, If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the son of man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his father with the holy angels. Um, So just keep in mind, like again, shifting your thoughts on eternity and what God says and what God thinks, because we all have to give an account to God one day. And so if, if you are not, uh, if you're even like going out and and talking about Christ, you know, like I'm in, I'm part of a youth ministry at um, the church I'm at. And so today we ask, hey, how many of y'all like, you know, tell people about Christ or how many of y'all, you know, talk about Christ to your friends and only a handful, like only two of them, you know, raised their hand and said, yeah, you know, I've had those conversations before. But, um, you know, like even if even the children, they struggle with it. But what are we doing, you know, as adults and how are, how are we example, exemplifying um, you know, how to go out and talk to Christ, you know, to our children. Are we showing them, you know, how to be bold and courageous for Christ and not be ashamed of the gospel, not be ashamed of what God has done for us. You know, like think a lot of times people think, oh, we're forcing, I, I don't want to force this on, you know, this person, but why, why is something good being forced? Why are we even thinking that way? And you have to question, like, why am I thinking that way? Why am I thinking that I'm forcing something on this person? You know, um, even if this person is a Buddhist or a a Muslim or anything, um, yeah, you should be a a light and you should show them Christ, but, um, you also need to tell them through words because God said, go out and preach the gospel. He didn't say go out and show anything. He said, go out and preach the gospel, speak the words. You have to speak those words, you know, eventually. And so it's important to realize like, you can't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How is he going to really use you if you're ashamed of his gospel, if you're ashamed of what he's done for you on the cross, you know, and this is good news. It's called the good news. It's not bad news. So how are we saying, oh, we don't want to push something on. You don't want to, you're saying you don't want to push the good news. Like, how does that sound? You don't want to push the good news. Okay, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure anyone would lo- love to hear good news. And so that's not forcing. That's like saying, I don't want to push this gift of $150,000 on this person. I don't want to force them to receive this. And of course, God is, you know, invaluable. Like his, the good news is invaluable because it's eternal life. But th- th- that's the concept that we're saying. And we need to really, as the body of Christ, need to shift our thoughts and showing that this is a gift. This is something that we should be saying. And so, yeah, he will be ashamed. And you have to think that he said that he will be ashamed for us, uh, of us if we are ashamed to share the gospel, if we are ashamed to go out and tell people about Christ. Keep in mind that he's going to be ashamed. He said, um, the son of man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his father with the holy angels. So remember when the Christ t- returns, he is going to be like with heavenly angels. You know, he's going to be on a cloud coming down and we're going to be like, holy, holy, holy our, is the Lord God almighty. And we're going to fall down and worship him. Everyone, every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. Every well, whether it's Buddhist, transgender, homosexual, whatever, they're all gonna bow and worship God because He's the Creator of us all. And so, how are we? How 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 do we limit and pick and choose who we tell Christ about? We can, like we can't. It's not our job. Our job is only to talk to people about Christ and be bold. So I encourage you. I encourage you um, to pray to God and ask Him through the Holy Spirit to give you that boldness. In Christ to go out and preach the gospel and, and go out and tell people about him and not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, Matthew 10 verses 30, 33 says, but everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my father in heaven. 
And I even think about Peter when he denied Jesus three times. You know, he said, no, I don't know that person. Um, you know, like this is all in our own human way of thinking. We can easily deny Christ. We can't say, oh, I'm always going to stand up for God. I'm never going to deny Christ. You can't say never, never. Okay, so be careful with that. It's only through the Holy Spirit that we have the boldness because Peter didn't have that Holy Spirit at the time when he denied Christ. So we can't look down on Peter. He didn't have the Holy Spirit. He was going in his own human way of thinking. So just keep that in mind. But when, you know, on the day of Pentecost, when, um, you know, they, the, the Holy Spirit came and fell upon, you know, the disciples, that's when they had the boldness. They were able to heal. They were able to, um, you know, um, and do different things. And so just knowing that only through the Holy Spirit are you able to even be bold, but asking God to give you that boldness, like I said before, is so vital. So how do we overcome people bondage or people pleasing? First things first, refocusing, shifting our focus back on Christ. So we said the dangers of it is, is your, you know, your focus is shift off of Christ. You're worried about the cares of this world. You're worried about what other people think of you. Um, you're worried about, you know, this and that and things that, you know, are not eternal. So the way to overcome that is go back and shift your focus back on God. Get in your quiet place. Get in your word, you know, and um, pray to God. You know, it's just getting there and talking or getting in your quiet place and being quiet before the Lord and asking him what he wants you to do. Like, what, is, what are the next steps in your life? Who does he want you to talk to about him? Who does he want you to send things to? What does he want you to say to people? So it's always about, you know, what God wants, not what you want in your when you're getting in your quiet place. And so you want to please him. Instead of pleasing people, you want to shift your focus and start pleasing God and uh, God alone. First Thess Thessalonians 2 verses 4 through 4 and 6 says, For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. God entrusts us, not just the disciples, and he entrusts us through the Holy Spirit with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not man, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Knowing that everything we do, God examines that motive. He sees beyond what we say or what we do. In our home and even way of thinking, we could be thinking that we're doing things, even ministry. You know, I always have to pray about, you know, getting on this channel and everything. Because I'm like, God, let me be used by you. I'm not doing this for self. I'm not doing this to be known. I'm doing this for you, Lord, and I want to please you. And honestly, it's hard. It's hard getting on here. Like even today, I honestly really did not want to get on here. I'm like, Lord, I'm so not wanting to get on here. <laughs> um, and it's just because like you have to push through the enemy attacks. Let me tell y'all, I've been attacked so much after on <laughs> with doing this channel. The enemy loves to attack. He attacks me in so many different ways. Y'all have no idea. Like people only see like, hi, the picture, happy smile. But I'm telling you, getting attacked daily and you gotta be ready for the, but you know the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pull down strongholds and casting out arguments, okay? So you have to keep speaking life over yourself. But I'm gonna finish reading First Thessalonians. It says, our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our heart. As for human praise, we have never sought it from you or anyone else. We're not looking for human praise. We're not looking for even the pastor. Oh, pastor so-and-so, you know, we got to do stuff to please the pastor. We have to, no, it's only Christ. Christ is the high priest of the church, not no pastor. You know, we respect our pastor, but we do, we're not doing anything to please him. So, um, and I can give you some examples, like things that might, you might, you know, God has put in your heart to say, you know, that might be like, oh, um, I don't want to cause any conflict with the church, you know, but things that God might have you see spiritually on a spiritual level of what's going on in the church or something like that. Don't speak up, speak up. Your voice is important, you know, in the body of Christ. If you're not saying anything, who will? I know God has always convicted me on that. He's like, you have to speak out. You have to speak up. You can't just like remain silent. And I'm not the one to remain silent. It's so hard for me to remain silent. I tell y'all. But, um, you know, God has been continually giving me um, circumstances and situations to be bold for him. And so knowing that, would you say, yeah, it might be con conf some conflict in that. And it's, um, you know, there's healthy conflict, you know, there's, um, you know, if you're, if people are, you know, idol worship, doing idolatry or, you know, sexual immorality or something like that, you know, it's time for the people, the body of Christ, there's people in the body of Christ and the people in the church 
that that's in the body of Christ when I'm in the church that needs to start standing up for the word of God and standing up for what he says. And it's time out for us uh, to be silent. It's time out for us to be silent and just let things pass in the church. It's time for us to speak out about different things. And it's time for us to stop worrying about, oh, how this other person is going to feel. And it's time for us to be bold and just do things that please God. And, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you on how to do it because everything we need we do definitely has to be out of love. But we need to, love also is telling people, hey, correction is love. And I feel like this is so neglected in the body of Christ right now. Another thing of how to refocus on Christ and pleasing him um, is just shifting. When you focus your th um, thoughts on Christ, um, just know that he will keep you in perfect peace. Isaiah 26, 3 says you will... He will keep you in perfect peace, all whose mind has stayed on him. So when you shift your focus, you 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 remove fear, you remove worry, and now you're you're shifting your focus and, and now you're getting that peace that surpasses all understanding. And the peace that will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Galatians 1 10 verses 12 also says, Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. I would not be Christ's servant. This is what Apostle Paul says. I received my message from no human source and no one taught me. Instead, I received it by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. So keep in mind that you people pleasing, you're trying to satisfy how what, what others and manipulate how other people think about you. You know, are you really being a servant of Christ? Are you really being a follower of Christ? So you'll have to question yourself with that. I received my message from no human source. This is what Galatians says. Uh, and no one taught me. So knowing that the information God pours into his people, God gives him them the mindset like God, God prunes, he renews our minds, he restores us and he, he shifts our focus. He transforms us into being more like him. So a lot of times it's not going to be anything that anyone teaches you about God and how to please him. It's things that he is pouring into you. And Romans 12, 12 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person, person by changing the way you think. So just knowing that is God is changing you. Like let God, allow God to change you, allow God to prune and mold you and shape you. And it's not going to be easy. I'm telling y'all, there's going to be so many obstacles that you have to jump through. There's so many things, there's so many distractions, but you have to keep pressing on. Don't give up. Okay, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Trust me, when you re we, when you um, remove yourself from people pleasing and re reshift your focus on God, you will start learning what is good and God God's good and perfect will for your life. So you will start accelerating into the blessings and the and everything that God has for you. So another way to um, break free from people pleasing is to pray for the confidence and boldness to stand for Christ. So uh, we kind of touched on that earlier um, about the apostles and how the Holy Spirit, you know, fell upon them on the day of Pentecost. But we too have that Holy Spirit. And so Joshua 1 9 says, this is my commandment. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So don't matter where you go, you can go to the ends of the earth. And God will be with you. He will be there for you. I am a living witness of that. Um, I recently, y'all saw my travel vlog of Thailand. And I tell you, God is stable. He's constant. He never changes. He is with you. He will protect you. He will provide for you. But you do have to be bold. Be bold and courageous. Don't don't shun. Don't, don't hide back and, you know, hide back and, like, shun yourself from what God has um, told you to do. Be bold about it. Be courageous. And be bold does not always mean being boisterous and loud. It means being standing firm and having that foundation of who you are in Christ. And another way is focusing on eternity. So remember that we all have to give an account to God one day. Okay. Um, in Second Timothy, it says, Verses Second Timothy two verses fifteen says, work hard so you can pre present yourself to God and achieve His approval. Um, be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly explains the word of truth. Um, and I love how it says correctly explains the word of truth. So in that you you can't just be going out and you know falsely saying things about God. You need to go in the word of God. What does the word of God say? Because there are some traditions in the church. 
or in general that really don't line up with the word of God. And so I encourage you to go in the word and seek God for yourself. Don't seek it from anyone. Don't go by what this person says. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in what he wants you to say and what he wants you to do. And so um, just knowing that everything you say, you, you will have to give an account to God. And so, um, you, you know, whatever you say can either acquit you or condemn you. And acquit you is to set you free, condemn you is to sentence you to death. So you just have to keep that in mind. Ephesians 5 verses 15 to 16 says, So be careful how you live. Don't look, live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every, every opportunity in these evil days. Um, so uh, the lastly, um, a way to break free from the bondage of people pleasing is that you keep in mind that you are helping people by walking the way God wants you to walk. I know we think people pleasing is doing whatever they want I, and actually shifting your mind. If God really, if you allow God to really shift your mind, you'll really realize that the ultimate way to please this person is by submitting to God. Because trust me, God knows that person inside and out, or he knows people more than you can ever imagine. He knows you more than you know yourself because he created us. So, um, Keep in mind that you submitting to God's will will be the best way for not only you, but also for that person. So 1 Peter 2 verses 12 says, Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see that your honorable behavior and they will give um, to God and they will give to God when he judges the world. Okay, so they'll give glory to God when he judges the world. Because they will see your honorable behavior. They're like, wow, he really is a child of God. And I, I clearly see how he's a child of God or she is a child of God. And I don't even, you know, like I know that you are, you know, um, the God of all gods. And so even in like the Old Testament and the Bible and everything, they, you know, like a lot of times, you know, you're you living an honorable life, you living a pure life, um, you being set apart. A lot of times, that's how people were won over, um, by you being set apart. You can't walk, dabble in the world and dabble in the, in the, in, you know, Christianity. You have, or being a follower of Christ. You have to choose. It says, choose this day who you will serve. And, um, and that is living an honorable life, being set apart, consecrating yourself is which making yourself sacred and holy you know so um keeping that in mind that people are watching you you once you say out of your mouth that you are a christian people are gonna watch you they're gonna watch what you do they're gonna watch what you say so are you doing things to please them are you going out to the club just because oh it's so-and-so's birthday you know i don't want to disappoint them are you going to that um bachelorette party because it's my best friend's bachelorette party and I don't want to disappoint her are you saying no I'm being set apart you know are, are you saying that you're you're gonna do this because God says this is the way to do it second Corinthians 8 verses 21 it says we are careful to be honorable before the Lord but we also want everyone else to see that we are honorable so again it's so important to be honorable let everyone see the life through the life you live this is, I am a child of God, I'm a follower of Christ, and I am not being sold. I'm sold out for Christ. And also, I am I have joy, I have peace, I have all these things, okay? And so you have to continually renew your mind, continually to submit to God, and continually ask God to lead you and give you the boldness and courage to, through the Holy Spirit, lead you um, into um, how to break free from people bondage. So um, this is the end of that. I thank y'all for watching. Um, I wanted to close with some things, kind of announcements. Um, first things first, I um, really, really enjoy um, doing this channel. I really, really feel like God is leading me into so many things with this channel. However, um, I do feel that there is um, a season for things. And right now, I've, I'm led to kind of take a little break off of this channel. And um, I, not forever. I will be back. But there will, I usually do weekly um, kind of little videos and messages but i kind of want to consecrate myself and get closer to god and um kind of ask him what he wants to do with this channel so i won't be on for a little bit and i don't know exactly how long but let me tell y'all i enjoy this and i really enjoy having people watch this but um i really really pray that 
you all just have a blessed day um and it will i will definitely let y'all know like kind of what's happening with the next things but i'm definitely going to kind of get in and um take some time to really get close with god and really ask him to lead me um especially in this season of my life so that's all for now i hope you all have a blessed blessed day and i'll talk to you later